Hi, welcome to Compelling Conversations where law meets business. I'm Dara Rosenbaum, a founding partner and attorney at Rosenbaum and Taylor in New York. My own journey has shown me the power of learning from others, whether from their successes or from their failures. And that's what led me to start this show. In each episode, my goal is to have a compelling conversation with a business leader, business owner, or other inspiring person who will share with you their experiences, their advice, and their perspective. I hope you'll learn from them and be inspired by them, just as I'm sure I will. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. My guest today, Erica Lehman, is a photographer, mentor, wife, copywriter, MBA holder, six-figure business owner, friend, and space holder. Erica is the owner of Sweet Alice Photography, which is named after her first kitten. In addition to being an accomplished wedding photographer, Erica is also an, Erica is also an ethical sales strategist and business optimization specialist for other heart-centered wedding photographers. Erica has a passion for helping other wedding photographers succeed because she wants to leave a legacy. She wants to teach other entrepreneurial photographers everything that she knows so they can carry on their own legacies. When she's not photographing or mentoring awesome people, you can find Erica sitting on the couch in her husband's pajama pants, drinking coffee and snuggling her four pets. Coffee and snuggles are her two primary love languages. Erica, it is so nice to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm happy to see you. Oh, it's good to see you too. <laughs> so uh, first I have to ask you, I know I've, I've heard and read that you're a space holder. What does that mean? That's a great question. <laughs> um, when I think about being a space holder, I think about allowing people the opportunity to tell me their stories, mm -hmm. to process with me without fear of judgment and without being nervous about being perfect. Mm -hmm. So allowing people really just like processing space and time and grace, um, because I think a lot of what we're shown a lot of the time is that we have to rush through our thoughts, rush through our processes. And sometimes we share things with people and they give us advice when we haven't necessarily given them permission to give us advice. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to know that they can come to me, share what they need to share. And then I will ask them, do you want perspective around that? Or did you just need to take up space? Both are available. Mm -hmm. So That's beautiful. I love that. So tell me the journey that got you to being the owner of Sweet Alice Photography. Sure. Um, my journey has been long. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a long journey. Um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in music performance and business. Mm -hmm. And during my last semester in my bachelor's program, I needed to fill up credits. So I took one photojournalism course. And then okay. from there, it just kind of like moved forward. Mm -hmm. where I would take photos of my friends for like a cup of coffee or 50 bucks here and there. <laughs> okay. I know. So, so different. Yeah. You have to, sometimes you start small. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it just naturally progressed up and to and through wedding photography over these past 12 years. So mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for those beginnings because they've brought me here now, mm -hmm. but it took me a long time to get here just because I think I didn't give myself the permission to excel in the way that I truly wanted to mm -hmm. until now, which is- and I'm a, I imagine that's something that you encourage the other photographers you mentor to do is give themselves that permission. Absolutely. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of the time we look for permission elsewhere mm -hmm. and really we're the permission holders and the granters for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So did you always know you wanted to open your own photography company or did that come in some other way? I had no idea. <laughs> if I were to look back at myself as a child, I would have no idea that this was even a path that I could take. Mm -hmm. Everything that I saw as an example was traditional, like blue collar work. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, I don't have anything against that, mm -hmm. but I didn't even know being a business owner was an option. Um, and I was just interested in business when I went to school for my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. I ideally wanted to be either in corporate or I wanted to be in higher education on the administration side. So mm -hmm. I always figured, oh, this photography piece, this creative piece of me is something I'll do on the weekends or evenings. And maybe I won't even build a business around it. But then it just naturally happened. And um, it's something that I really enjoy. 
So I, I never could have foreseen this path mm -hmm. from where I was as a child or even where I was as a college student to now 12, 13 years later. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you said the path was long. Were there, were there difficulties in the beginning, or do you pretty much have smooth sailing on the uh, on the formation of the company? That's a really good question. I think it's probably a mixture of both and. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think um, I had primarily smooth sailing, um, but there, there's always bumps in the road. And I think I was resistant and hesitant to claim that I wanted this because I knew being a singular business owner would be difficult. Mm -hmm. I always kind of was very nervous about health insurance options. I was very nervous about because photography is cyclical, like what would my cash flow look like? Mm -hmm. So it really took up until two years ago that I felt like this is a safe choice for me. And I do have the permission to bet on myself at this point in time, even though I didn't feel like that was available back then. What changed about two years ago? With you know what? I actually think it was the pandemic. Oh, okay. Isn't that interesting? So I, I saw the opportunity to work from home because I was working in a higher education institution. We worked from home mm -hmm. and I was like, I like this. <laughs> this uh -huh. is enjoyable for me. <laughs> and I also saw that life went on, you know, not to minimize the pandemic. I think the pandemic is, was horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw that businesses came out on top still. Mm -hmm. They had a little bit of, you know, sticky stuff that happened. They had to work through difficulties, mm -hmm. but businesses came out on top. And I said, I have one life. If people can make it through the pandemic, I think I can make it through really launching my business full time after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, and I, this might sound silly, but I feel like pandemics come around once every hundred years. What's, what's the likelihood it's going to happen again? Right. <laughs> So I feel Less like, yeah, like I feel like if we can weather that, then I think I, I have an okay game plan moving forward. So you went full time about two years ago. I actually, I started entertaining the idea of going full time two years ago. Mm -hmm. I really started preparing about a year ago. And then I just went officially full time, even though I've been building my business for the past 12 years, officially full time about a month ago now. Oh, that's exciting. What a great yeah. time. Yeah. How yeah. do you feel? I feel, feel good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I beautiful. feel really good. But it was, it was a weird, uh, like transition for me. Mm -hmm. It was, um, interesting to realize that I didn't have to measure my life and my responsibilities against outside responsibilities. Now I was the one who was responsible for managing my entire schedule, not just the business in relation, relation to a nine to five type of schedule as well. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting transition. But it sounds like you're enjoying it. I see the smile. Yeah, I, I am really enjoying it. And um, I just think it's so like what a blessing to be able to do what you love to do all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel very fortunate. And you love the wedding industry, it sounds like. I do love the wedding industry. And um, I've loved the wedding industry as soon as I've gotten into it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's such opportunity there for growth and expansion, not only just for photographers, but also for clients, you know, it can really be a win win for both people who are getting photographed and for photographers. And it can it has the opportunity to be a really robust, heart centered industry, if we allow it to be, I think. And let me just pull on that. What what opportunities do you see there for the clients? Because obviously, they, yeah. I mean, the business opportunity seems clear for you. But what's the business opportunity? Or what's the growth opportunity for the clients? Yes, that's a great question. Um, probably, yes, more of a growth opportunity than a business opportunity. Right. But with vendors in the wedding industry, I think there's an opportunity for clients mm -hmm. to really connect with them as individuals. And in, and in connecting with them as individuals and honoring their humanity, and everybody's kind of human together in this relationship, mm -hmm. um, they have the opportunity to feel more supported, to feel like they have a friend throughout the process if that's what the photographer offers, it doesn't always have to be a very professional type of relationship. It can be something that's very pleasant and there can still be boundaries, of course, mm -hmm. but I think that there are beautiful opportunities to create relationships over and above with the professional relationship 
provides automatically, I guess. And how does that different relationship affect your work? Hmm. I think when you have, for photographers specifically, when you have somebody in front of your camera who feels supported by you because you're showing up as a friend, you're showing up in that really pleasant energy, you're showing up just to serve them and take good care of them, mm -hmm. they feel so comfortable with you and that shows in your photos. Mm -hmm. And not only does that show in your photos, but it it will also that's what they'll remember in their memory. So when they look at the photo, it's not just going to be like, "Oh, this is a great photo." It's also going to be like, "And I had a great day." Mm -hmm. I had a great day with my photographer and I had a great day with my fiance or my partner. Mm -hmm. So that I think it's a, a, it's an incredible opportunity for both parties mm -hmm. to have a really robust professional relationship mm -hmm. in that type of an instance. I think it's not dissimilar from a lot of other service industries. I mean, obviously you're in photography, but it's, you know, it's not dissimilar from the way that I approach my client relationships mm -hmm. that I want to get to know my clients and I want to understand what their pain points are. I want to understand personality. I want yes. to understand their risk tolerance. So, so there's a lot that goes into kind of creating that relationship, which to me just makes the work a lot smoother and a lot more satisfying for me and a lot more productive for them. Absolutely. I think that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. And um, I like that you said that it relates to many different industries. Obviously, like I'm so honed in on my own, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I know that because I've worked with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, and I loved working with you. I mean, it was it was wonderful to help you with the contracts of the business. Yeah. And I loved working with you and I refer you to everybody. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the best. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but I appreciate I appreciate that in you because I think there is probably an expectation or I can see my own expectation in this in the past to think, oh, a lawyer, an attorney is going to be one particular way in maybe the way that the media has, has portrayed them or in the way that we've kind of just been taught growing up. But you're not that. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, what I love is the relationship building. That sounds like very similar to what you're doing, which is it's not you don't just see the person as a, as a client or as a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. You see the person as who they are, what they need. And there's a personal connection to me that makes people more willing to share things and yeah. makes people more, you know, more willing to kind of work with you as opposed to either being a little bit reticent or mm -hmm. a little bit maybe standoffish or a little bit more serious when mm -hmm. it can really just be a free flowing conversation to get to whether it's a beautiful picture or a great outcome in a lawsuit or whatever you're doing. Right. Yeah. Makes total sense to me. Yeah. And what do you love about weddings? Uh, I <laughs> I, you don't have to pick just one thing. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the opportunity, like, I think the way that I think about it is twofold where obviously a wedding is like most of the time so much fun. Like, is there stress that goes into planning a big event? Sure. That's going to happen for any big event, mm -hmm. but really you're celebrating creating a family. Like that's such a beautiful thing and such a beautiful facet of society, the fact that you throw this big party to celebrate that you're starting your own family. And I just think that's so beautiful. Um, and all these people come together and they wish you well, and they give you gifts and they dress up for you. Like mm -hmm. what other opportunity do you have for that? Like there, there's just so much like love and acceptance. And um, I, I'm struggling with the words because I feel like it's so big. Like mm -hmm. weddings are so big and so impactful. Um, and that's one sense of it is that there's so much that goes into it and it's so intentional and so beautiful. And then I also think there's another piece, another piece of it too, that the fact that people trust me and invite me into these days as almost a stranger mm -hmm. is so humbling mm -hmm. for me. They trust me to take good care of them through both taking their images and showing up in a spirit of service. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm able to do that, I think is incredible. I, I don't, I, I haven't seen many other opportunities in my own professional experience mm -hmm. that have given me that sort of trust and just, just insight into somebody's families into their friendships, into their relationships. Like this is a very intimate thing and they allow me to be there. I'm, 
And I, 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 love how ser- I love how seriously you take that aspect of it, that it's not just the craft of taking wonderful pictures that people are going to appreciate for decades, but it's the it's sort of the, the, the craft of building those relationships and respecting what you're being invited into. That's, that's I, I love that perspective. Thank you. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I can t- I can tell I can tell by the smile how how seriously you take it and how excited you are by it. Thank you. Now, how did you get into mentoring other photographers? That is a great question. So, several years ago, I had a bride who actually recommended me to a coworker of hers, saying, "I have a great photographer. If you want to get coffee with her and you have questions about becoming a photographer or a wedding photographer in particular, mm-hmm. why don't you get coffee with her?" So I did. I got coffee with her, and a few months later, she actually sent me an email and she said, "Erica, would you be open to mentoring me?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> Immediately, no, (laughs) because I was so nervous about not doing it justice. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go into that flippantly either. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go into mentorship very intentionally in a very similar way that I walk into wedding days and wedding relationships Mm -hmm. and building around that. And so I really thought about it for a while. And I told her, you know, no, not right now. But if anything changes, I will let you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it for several months and I put some stuff together and I really tried to document outside of my brain what goes on in my brain that has allowed me to be successful Mm -hmm. in the wedding industry as a wedding photographer. And then I reached back out to her and I said, are you interested in this? And she said, yes. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, if there's one person that's interested in this and is looking for this, why don't I offer it as a whole, like in general to the public? And I've had people sign up with me and it was like, wow, this is possible. (laughs) And um, I think that that just like there's a responsibility going into wedding days, there's a responsibility going into mentorship and coaching Mm -hmm. where what you're sharing with people is potentially like life changing and life impacting for them. And so Mm -hmm. there has to be a sense of responsibility around it as well to not take it lightly because you are really impacting somebody's life and potentially their livelihood as well. Um, So that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. And I feel very similarly about it as I do with wedding photography, that there's a lot of intention that has to be assigned to it, that there is a lot of relationship building and trust building that has to be expected within it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of my favorite things to see my mentorship clients succeed. When they text me wins or they share wins with me, I'm like, oh my God, that's so amazing. (laughs) That's so amazing that you did that. (laughs) That's terrific. What, What kind of things do you coach on? What kind of kind of aspects do you mentor on? Yeah, that um, I feel like primarily I like to focus on the refinement of business activities where mm-hmm. somebody may have the foundation already, but they need to know how to get to the next level. So maybe they're seeing that they're getting consultations on the calendar, but they're not booking them. So how can we refine the booking process? They're, they have a robust website, but they're not getting inquiries. So how can we encourage more inquiries. Um, They have a social media, but maybe they're not consistent with it. So Mm -hmm. how can we work on a a social media consistency plan that calls into their values so that their values can call into their clients? Mm -hmm. Um, And I also really like to emphasize permission-based bookings so that when a client gets on a call with with a photographer, they're not feeling this sense of urgency or this sense of rush or salesiness that they get to start to build the conversation, start to build the relationship in the booking process, Mm -hmm. and then offer permission and agency to the clients throughout the entire process so that they feel like they're building this relationship together instead of just a a receiver of a service, I guess. And I I know you refer to yourself as a heart-centered photographer. How do you find other like-minded photographers to mentor? Or do they find you? I think they find me. That's okay. Yeah. And I I think that calls into what I teach my my mentorship clients is that you want to always be very aware of your values. And in anything you share online, your website, there are going to be implicit and explicit value statements that you provide. Mm -hmm. And your values often mirror what your clients values are or 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 are at least values that 
they can resonate with. Even if they don't necessarily match up directly with them, they can be like, oh, I see this value and I like that in a person. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the way that I speak about things and the way that I share with people and how open I am about my own journey and about um, sharing other people's journeys as well, people are attracted to that and they see that and they're like, this is what I want. I want, I want somebody who can coach me, but will also see me as a human, not just a business owner. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think a lot of the time they find me more often than not. And are you only mentoring people outside your local area? Do you mentor people within your local area? I mentor primarily right now. I think this is basically a byproduct of the fact that I've only been focusing on my business full time for the past month. <laughs> so I could only take on what I could take on. But right now I have primarily local wedding photographers, but I want it to grow bigger. I want to work with whoever needs assistance. And I do have some people that I've spoken with who are in places like Texas, in places like Massachusetts, so a little bit outside of my current local industry. Mm -hmm. So I would love for it to expand. It's getting there. Now, I guess the obvious question, or I think the obvious question is working with local photographers, isn't that helping the competition? Yeah, it is. <laughs> And I don't mind. Okay. Because I feel like clients who come to me come to me. Clients who go to other people go to other people. Mm -hmm. Either way, a client will be served in the way that they're looking to be served. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that I'm losing out by helping other people because I'm just helping them to succeed. And in helping them to succeed, other people are succeeding because they're getting to help clients that are looking for them, right? Mm -hmm. And realistically, there's so many people in in this area. I can't I can't photograph every single wedding here. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> as much as you might like to. Yeah, it's not possible. I'm one person. Uh -huh. So statistically, it doesn't make sense. Um, logistically, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that, to be honest, one day I'm going to get old. And I can't photograph weddings anymore. I can't, I won't be able to do super long wedding days, carrying gear, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I want to set up the next set of photographers to excel because when they excel and when they succeed, their clients will also see, will also receive a byproduct of, of that and being served really well. I think that's an amazing view that you are looking to not only help the photographers, but that there are clients out there who you don't necessarily feel are your clients, or they may not necessarily feel that you're their photographer mm -hmm. and that you want to do whatever you can to get those, get those matches made so that people have a wonderful experience. Yeah. That's, that's a really beautiful approach to, to being in business. Thank you. It, and it feels easier. It feels lighter. Mm -hmm. I, yes, there's competition, but I can't be bothered. You know, I, <laughs> I'd rather like enjoy what I'm doing and feel like I'm making an impact mm -hmm. than feel so beholden by what potentially may or may not end up in my client roster. Mm -hmm. What's a, I feel like you must have tons. What's a great wedding story you have? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I really love, this is so many stories all wrapped up in one, but I love, 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 love um, Jewish weddings. Okay. They're so intentional. Their traditions are so beautiful and their parties are so fun. Mm -hmm. And like, I love the horror when we start, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> and I have photographed many Jewish weddings and just the way that they have all these sweet traditions that are so meaningful and mm -hmm. so beautiful, and a lot of them actually center women, mm -hmm. is just like, like it gives me goosebumps. And so whenever I have a Jewish wedding or I get to book a Jewish wedding, mm -hmm. I am thrilled. So I just feel like I love the intentionality of Jewish weddings from mm -hmm. my own experience. Not that other weddings aren't as intentional, but the traditions that are built into Jewish weddings, I just think are incredibly beautiful. Mm, very interesting. Is there like a size wedding that you prefer to do? Do you like small intimate weddings or big blowouts? 
That's a great question. I think I like both, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So I love big weddings because they're big, exciting. There's a lot going on. Um, and it's almost like you never are wanting for something to photograph. Mm -hmm. But I also love smaller weddings because of that intentionality. A lot of the times, smaller weddings or elopements have more of a magnifying glass on the couple than is allowed for larger weddings. Mm -hmm. um, not that the day isn't about them too, but um, with smaller weddings and elopements, there's more of an opportunity, I think, sometimes for really intentional, slow-paced storytelling. You're not rushing, running to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So I think both are beautiful and I enjoy both and I book both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I just think that, yeah, I, I don't think I have a, I don't think I respect one or or the other differently or more. Mm -hmm. They're just, they have different focuses. Mm -hmm. Now you use the word storytelling. What is, what is, how does that, I guess I'm not really familiar with how that relates to photography. I mean, it feels more like a words on a page, you know, a, a yes. Yeah, absolutely. So the way that, because I took that one class in college <laughs> <laughs> that was photojournalism, mm -hmm. that is like my basis, right? Like that's my core of how I think about things. So I'm always throughout a wedding day trying to document what's happening in that moment, which means it may not be perfect, but it's telling the story of the day. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, like I'm going to photograph you getting in your gown. I'm going to photograph all the details. I'm going to photograph all the, the like things that you have to photograph. But when I think about when I photograph things like first looks, that's a story. I don't facilitate that. Mm -hmm. I just put them together and I say, move forward and we're going to document, do whatever you need to do in this moment and let yourself be fully immersed in this moment and let yourself be fully human in this moment, because this is what you're going to remember. Mm -hmm. And so the way that we document, I say we, because I have team members as well, but um, the way that we document is really in telling the story through images. Mm -hmm. If, if that makes sense. It does. That actually really does make sense. So you obviously, you know, you've, you've launched Sweet Alice Photography and you've got this mentorship program. What is something that you've learned along the way on your journey that you wish you'd known earlier? Yes. <laughs> um, I think it probably goes back to permission, mm -hmm. that we have the permission to give permission to ourselves. We don't have to look for it outside of ourselves. We have permission to be excellent. We don't have to be afraid of be being mediocre because the fact that we're even nervous about that shows that we won't be. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if I could tell myself anything, I would tell myself, like, let's just say five, eight, 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. that this is something I could do full time if I gave myself the permission to do it. And I set myself up in a way that made me feel safe to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just purely based on, I think my that's probably my biggest lesson is that permission is available and we're the ones that get to give it to ourselves. I love that idea because it's something that obviously transcends just the photography business. It's it's every entrepreneur, it's every solopreneur, it's everybody who anybody who's thinking about some starting something on the side or, yes. or leaving a corporate job or something like that. I think that permission is is something that's probably often overlooked. Yes, as sort of yes. a key, as sort of a key component in success. Yeah, and we look for it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Friends, family, spouses. Mm -hmm. Well, Erica, I have loved this conversation. This has been absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. I'm really enjoying talking about this, the photography business and the weddings and seeing your passion for it. Uh, tell the listeners how they can find you, how they can find Sweet Alice, how they can connect with you. Yeah. Um, the best place to connect with me is probably Instagram, just because I like it there. Mm -hmm. So I'm always on there. And that's at Sweet Alice Photography. And then you can find me on my website at www.sweetalicephotography.com. And all of my stuff is there. <laughs> And I'll tell you, it's, I'll tell everybody, it's a, it's a really fun website. It gives oh. you a really good glimpse and a really good sense of who Erica is. I really, I enjoy kind of, uh, you know, surfing around on there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having well, thank me. Thank you very, very much. This has been fantastic. I really enjoyed it. So fun. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Bye.